How to write a literature review. Before we embark on a detailed discussion on how to write properly and effectively the literature review part of a research paper, such as a thesis or dissertation, it is important to first discuss its meaning, nature, and dynamics, as well as the core elements that it should contain. This is obviously because understanding the meaning, nature, and dynamics of a literature review and knowing exactly what to include in it allow us to have both greater control and clear direction of the writing process. So, what is a literature review and why the need for it? As is well known, a literature review is a survey of scholarly materials that provide an overview of a particular topic by summarizing and evaluating its state of knowledge or practices. In other words, a literature review is a collection of the most relevant and significant scholarly materials, such as journal articles and books, in relation to the topic or research problem under investigation. As we can see, this collection of the most relevant and significant scholarly materials provides the researcher with a comprehensive look at what have already been done on that topic or research problem and by whom. This, in turn, will enable the researcher to situate and establish her own project in the already existing body of scholarship on that topic. In this way, the researcher avoids running the risk of duplicating already existing research works and, as a result, wasting time, energy, and resources. It is also through conducting a literature review that the researcher gains new insights that she can use in her research and determine some gaps in the existing body of literature that she can fill, which in turn will catapult the uniqueness and originality of her own study. Now, another important point to consider when writing the literature review is that this part of the research paper is directly connected to the rationale of the study, or in some research tradition, background of the study. Hence, there should be a direct link between the rationale of the study and the literature review. As is well known, one of the main functions of the literature review is to support the major claim or main argument that the researcher developed in the rationale of the study. As we may already know, in the rationale of the study, the researcher shall have argued that her research project is timely and necessary. In fact, some of the important points that must be developed in the rationale of the study is timeliness and necessity, in some cases, urgency of the study. To reiterate, one of the main functions of the literature review is to help support and justify the arguments that the researcher developed in the rationale of the study. Thus, in the literature review, the researcher needs to show that the study is indeed timely and necessary by citing several important recent researches that have contributed to clarifying the main issues of her research project. If the researcher succeeds in doing this, then we can say that her study is indeed timely and necessary. And in doing so, however, The researcher needs to show that, although many scholars have already done excellent researches on the same topic, for example, the level of stress among public high school teachers in California during the COVID-19 pandemic, hers is a unique one and therefore not a duplication of those previous researches. It must also be noted that, in writing the literature review, the researcher should cite only those works or researches that have direct bearings on her own study, and in doing so, should refrain from quoting lines or passages that are not directly aligned with the main argument of the research project. Hence, the researcher must be selective and economical. That is, she must be eclectic, so to speak, in writing the literature review. For this reason, the researcher should not say whatever she wants to say simply because it is nice. No matter how famous the scholar or how nice the statement is, it should not be included if it does not directly align with the main argument of her study. So as we can see, 
When writing the literature review, the researcher should plan and structure it based on the key points mentioned earlier. In this way, the researcher will have a clear picture of the flow of the tasks that need to be developed in writing this section of the research paper. It will also enable her to develop a theoretical framework and appropriate methodology for her study, as well as position herself in relation to other researchers and theorists by showing how her study addresses a gap or contributes to a recent debate in her area of specialization. And finally, once all these points are addressed in the literature review, we can truly say that the researcher has deep familiarity with the topic of her research and its scholarly context. Now, how do we go about writing the literature review of a research paper? Let's park this question for our next lesson. Stay tuned!